good day. So our discussion for today is about Zener diode. So it's a special type of diode that can be operated in the reverse breakdown region. So what is the characteristic of the Zener diode? It is a silicon PN junction device that is designed for operation in the reverse breakdown region. So if you can remember from our previous discussion on ideal diodes and silicon diodes, basically the standard diodes that we were discussing before, the idea is that during the forward bias condition, our diode conducts. But when it is in reverse bias condition, then our diode is in its off state, meaning it will not conduct and there is no current flowing throughout the whole circuit. But for the Zener diode, it can actually operate when the voltage bias is, uh, it can actually operate in the reverse bias condition, given that your bias voltage is equal or greater than what we call the reverse breakdown voltage set in a Zener diode. So this is now our this is now our Zener diode symbol. So if you can remember our standard diode, the the uh, the symbol is something like this, right? This is your cathode. This is your anode. But for our Zener diode, it has a little bent line over here that is being added to our standard diode symbol. I think it's easier to remember because this one, this symbol here creates somehow a letter Z. Okay, so it's, it's, the, same, it's the same connections. This part over here, the triangle or the arrow part is the anode and this part is the cathode, all right? Now for the characteristic curve of our Zener diode, our forward bias, in this part here, you can see that since it is a silicon PN junction device, the voltage across your Zener diode will be 0.7 volts during the forward bias. So it's just the same the silicon diode that we have discussed before. So when it is in forward bias condition again, given that your input is equal or greater than 0.7 volts, then your Zener diode will turn on and will always output 8.7 volts, right? But when your Zener diode is reversed, this part here, it will have, it is an open circuit, equivalent to this one, is an open circuit, okay? And it will not conduct any current until the V bias will be equal to the breakdown voltage. Now, this is where, this is the time when your voltage bias is equal to your breakdown voltage, which is given by, which is denoted by V sub Z. So this is now the equivalent circuit for our Zener diode in reverse bias when your V bias is equal to your reverse breakdown voltage. Okay, so if you can remember from our, uh, if you can see here from our forward bias condition, when it is turned on, it will follow that your anode here, of course, that is positive. So it will have a positive polarity here and a negative polarity here and the value of 0.7 volts, right? But for during, um, during the reverse breakdown region, the polarity of the voltage will be reversed. The left side here will have a negative value, will have a negative polarity and the positive, and the right side will have a positive polarity. And that is because that it is, that is because it's operating in the reverse bias condition. Okay, so moving on. I'm gonna show you a, a live simulation of our very simple Zener diode circuit. Okay, so this is now our circuit for a Zener diode. So I'm gonna show you what happens during the forward bias condition, what happens during the reverse bias condition. So let's just 
verify the information that we had uh, we just had discussed okay so actually this is in reverse bias so i'm just gonna go ahead and rotate this one so that it will be in forward bias because i want you to see the forward bias first so by the way this is every circuit.com slash app so if you want to know how to use this app or software online software then you can go ahead and check my other videos for um, navigation and simulating a simple circuit using everycircuit.com. All right. Uh, I'm going to link that somewhere here. I don't know. Just look for it. Yeah. So again, this is our basic uh, Zener diode circuit. So I just added the voltage source. We have the resistor 1K ohm and then the Zener diode. Now, the Zener diode, don't be confused with the value here that is given by 10 volts. This is not the barrier potential because we know that the uh, Zener diode acts like acts as a silicon diode when it is in forward bias. So the value is still 0.7, and we can verify that as we when we run the simulation. Okay, so when you get um, so when you have a value of the voltage, usually when you use online circuit simulator or offline circuit simulators, the values or the voltage that is given uh, with the Zener diode is the breakdown, uh, is their breakdown voltage, is the reverse breakdown voltage, right? So this, uh, we want to simulate our Zener diode when it is in forward bias condition, but our voltage source should be less than 0.7 volts, okay? So we already know that when it is less than the barrier potential, then uh, the diode must be in off state. Okay, so let's go ahead and change our voltage value to maybe maybe 90 millivolts or 0 0.09 volts. So this is way lesser than our 0.7 volts. So we can see here, if we run the simulation, what will happen now to our voltage across the Zener diode. Okay, so you can see here that it has zero current, zero amperes, right, flowing through the whole circuit. Okay, so we don't have any current flowing through the whole circuit. That is why we have zero amperes here. But for the volt voltmeter, it has a reading of 90 millivolts because this one is an open circuit. So basically the voltage that is being read by this voltmeter is this voltage uh, from our voltage source. So if you further increase this to say 700 millivolts, that is the requirement for a silicon diode, it still has a small value for the current because it is in microamperes, right? But the reading now for our voltmeter is 644 millivolts. It's not exactly 700 millivolts because we already have a current, a very small current flowing over here because of the dynamic resistance. So if we check our characteristic curve for our diode, then we can verify that because of the dy dynamic resistance, there is a very small forward current that is flowing through our circuit. Okay, so if we further increase this to, let's just say, three volts. All right. Now the current now is in milliamperes. And our Zener diode, because it is in forward bias, and the, our, our voltage source is way, way bigger than the 0.7 volts. So now the voltage across our Zener diode is around 742 millivolts, or this is now the value of our silicon diode. Okay. And so again, this is not exactly. Uh, 0 0.7 because of the presence of the dynamic resistance. So uh, I think this is a good model because it is closer to the reality. All right. So that is now for the forward bias. Now, let's go ahead and just stop. So let's just stop this simulation and let's go ahead and change our Zener diode so that it will be in reverse bias condition. So... Let's just rewind that. 
So just to remove all those um, indicators. Okay, so let's go ahead and change our orientation for the Zener diode because we already we already finished with the forward bias. So let's just click R to rotate. And let's connect all this again. All right. So now our Zener diode is in reverse bias condition because the cathode here for our Zener diode is connected to the positive polarity of our voltage source. Okay. So there are two conditions that we need. Uh, okay, there are two possible outputs for our Zener diode when it is a reverse bias. Going back to the characteristic curve, it is in it is in an off state if the voltage source is less than this breakdown voltage, which is 10 volts. Okay, so let's just check if that is true based on I of course that is true, but let's just verify using our simulation. Okay. Okay, so we have zero amperes flowing. So let's again increase it a little bit more to maybe five volts. Okay, so we still don't have current to the whole circuit. So again, the voltage here is uh, across or the voltage that is being read by our voltmeter is this voltage here because again it is in open circuit. So let's again increase it to maybe eight volts. And then the same thing happens. Now if we move this to 10 volts, we should be expecting that our Zener diode will start start to turn on. So you can see that the current is already starting to flow, even if it's just a very, very small amount, right? If we further increase this to, say, 20 volts, then we can now get a current that is equal to 10 milliamperes. And the voltage across our Zener diode, as you can see, is 9.99 volts, which is just approximately equal to the, its reverse breakdown voltage. So this is now the main characteristic or main function of a Zener diode. It could act as a voltage regulator. And because it outputs, it outputs uh, as a constant DC voltage during the reverse bias, it is an excellent over voltage security component. That is why Zener diode, aside from being a voltage regulator, it is considered as a protection device. So if we further increase this 20 volts to say 60 volts, you can see that the voltage across the Zener diode is still equal to around 10 volts. So that's it for the that's it for the simulation of our Zener diode. I hope you're able to grasp the, the concept of a Zener diode. And let's now go ahead to our example. We have here a network that is designed to limit the voltage to 20 volts during the positive portion of the applied voltage or during the positive cycle or positive alteration and to zero volts for a negative exertion of the applied voltage. So we just need to check its operation and plot the waveform of the voltage across the system for the applied signal. So we assume that the system has a very high input resistance, so it will not affect the behavior of the network. So here we have an input voltage of, um, we have an input voltage here that has a maximum peak voltage of 60 volts. So, and then we have, a circuit over here network that has a resistor, a Zener diode with a breakdown or reverse breakdown voltage given, uh, reverse breakdown voltage of 20 volts and then a silicon diode. And then we have here a system that basically could be an oscill oscilloscope for us to measure the waveform of the output or the voltage across the Zener diode. Okay, so let's go ahead and analyze during uh for each alteration or for each cycle okay 
So again, we have this part here. Uh, given we have here, uh, we can set this as t over 2, which is half of the period or half of the cycle. This is t. Okay. So from 0 to t over 2, we have here the positive alterations. And from t over 2 to t, we have the negative cycle. Okay, so let's go ahead and analyze what happens during the positive alteration. So for the positive, during the positive cycle, what is the equivalent of our circuit? Now, before that, we need to check whether our diode is, whether our diodes are in forward or reverse bias. So for the Zener diode, during the positive cycle, the positive polarity here is connected to the cathode. Therefore, this is in reverse bias, right? And for the negative polarity, it's connected to the cathode of the silicon. Therefore, this one is in forward bias. So now, how do we analyze our circuit? There are two diodes present in the network. So we must consider which diode requires more. Now, for the silicon, we know that it will just turn on when your V input is greater or equal to 0.7. Okay, let's just say that. Silicon diode will turn on. But is this enough to turn on our Zener diode? The answer is 0.7 is not enough to turn on our Zener diode. All right. So we need to look at what value now will make our Zener diode turn on. Because again, our Zener diode, although it is in reverse bias, it will turn on when the V bias or the V input is equal to our breakdown voltage. Okay, so that means that even if silicon requires only 0.7, our, our V, our, our Zener diode will still be at off state. Okay, so that means we need to have a V input equal to 20 volts so that the whole circuit is a closed circuit. So that's the condition that we want to, to achieve, that your V input must be at least 20 volts for our Zener diode to turn off at reverse bias condition, okay? Okay, so to put this simply, we can get, we can have, uh, we can assume some values. For example, VI is equal to 10 volts. All right, so when VI is equal to 10 volts, the only diode that will turn on is the silicon diode. And it will have a value of 0 0.7 volts, right? But our Zener diode will be an open circuit. It will be an open circuit. Now, when V input is equal to 20 volts, Okay, our silicon, of course, will turn on because it's greater than 0.7. And then our Zener diode will turn on because the V input now is equal to its breakdown voltage, right? But remember that the value of our, I mean, the polarity of our Zener diode is the opposite. It should be that the cathode side here for our Zener diode is now the positive side for our 20 volts. So that is 20 volts. Okay, so that means that for VI, less than 20 volts, our V output is always going to be our V output here is equal to zero volts. Okay, 
when V input is greater than 20 volts, this Zener diode will already turn on. So, because it is now operating at the, at the reverse breakdown voltage, so our V output will always be 20 volts. It will be something like this. Uh, so during a positive cycle, this dashed curve here, the V input, so it's always going to be 20 volts. The output is always going to be 20 volts when your input is 20 volts or greater than 20 volts. Okay. That those values. And then for the reverse bias, uh, sorry, for the negative cycle, this one here, it will always be zero because even at some point, your Zener diode will be forward bias in this condition, but your silicon will always be an open circuit. Okay, so it will always be like this. Always be an open circuit. Okay, so there's there will be no current flowing through the whole circuit. That is the end of the lesson.